everyone! For today's video, I want to show you what my favorite lenses are for portrait photography and travel photography, why I like to use them, plus some example images and some comparison images at the end as well. So as you can see, I do have a bunch of lenses as part of my kit and I use them all for different reasons. So depending what style I'm after, depending what style my client is after for a photo. But today I just want to focus on my favorites and that is the Canon 35mm 1.4 and the Canon 50mm 1.2. These are my two favorite lenses for portrait and travel photography. These two lenses are my absolute favorites and I bring them along to every single shoot that I do, whether it is a portrait shoot or something else. I just always have these in my kit because they are great lenses and can be used for heaps of different reasons as well. Um, and I'm going to get into the reasons why I like them in a minute. Um, I just wanted to mention that my kit of portrait photography is totally different to when I first started. I used to have lenses that I used all the time for portrait photography, which I don't use anymore. So if you'd like to see a video about that, please let me know because I'd love to make it. But getting into it, I'm going to start with the 35. So the 35 is my favorite lens of all. I have this on my camera like 90% of the time when I'm shooting, it like literally doesn't come off. It is my definite go-to lens for travel photography and it's my go-to lens for portrait photography as well most of the time. But I kind of switch between the 35 1.4 and the 50 1.2 for portraits, but most of the time I stick to this. So this is the Canon 35 1.4 and I'll just give you a close up so you can see what it looks like. And this is it with the lens cap off. It has like some glitter in it from a shoot that I did like five years ago and it still hasn't come out. I don't know if you can see it in the little edges somewhere around here, I think. So that is the Canon 35 1.4 and it's got this little band because I use it so much and also I use it in really harsh conditions. So I've shot with it in the rain, in the fog, in the snow. Um, I've done shoots at waterfalls where I'm getting drenched and so is my camera so the actual original band kind of came off the glue got unstuck and in order to keep it in order to keep it water resistant I've put this little band against me band on it so that's why it looks like that when I first started fashion photography I was using my Canon 50mm 1.4 for pretty much all my shoots and then as time went on, I started shifting and going into the wedding photography industry and I was working with a lot of wedding photographers and I was doing some second shooting for them so I could get experience in shooting weddings and I noticed a lot of them used a 35mm and I absolutely love the way the photos came out, the style of the photos, the way they look, like it was just really attractive to me and I was like, hmm, that lens looks interesting. So one day I was doing a fashion shoot with a model who's also a photographer and she had the 35mm 1.8 and I asked her to bring it along to the shoot to so I could test it out and see what it was like and oh my god let me tell you the second I put that lens on my camera I fell in love with it it was uh it was just like a match made in heaven it was like perfect for me hey Evie's come to keep me company <laughs> So pretty much the next day I went out and bought one because I loved it so much and I knew I needed it in my kit to use all the time. Um, so I bought this 35 that I'm showing you now and I think that was like maybe six years ago now and I've used it heavily and it's still going really strong. So I'm super impressed at least by the quality of this lens. So a lot of you might be saying, but the 35mm isn't a portrait lens. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I love it the most. It is actually a really unconventional lens and focal length to use for a portrait session, but that's why I love it so much. I'm not after taking perfect photos all the time. I actually like photos with a little bit of quirkiness um, that has some like creative style to it because the 35 is quite distorted when you're taking portraits. So that's one of the reasons why I love it. And I'm gonna show you guys some example photos now of pictures I've taken, <laughs> pictures I've taken with the 35. <laughs> She's gonna be everywhere in the background. So here are some close-up photos I've taken with the Canon 35mm 1.4. I really love the way that you can see more of the background in a photo when you shoot with the 35. When I used to shoot 
portrait photography with the 85 or the 50, it blurs the background so much, even if you use it as a, at a high aperture, that you can't even tell where you're shooting anymore. It's literally just like bokeh heaven in the background and you can't see anything. So I actually like the 35 for the sake that you can see the background. And when I'm shooting in a really beautiful location, like in Australia we have amazing beaches and we've also got good forests and I've had great garden locations and stuff like that. I really want you to be able to see where we're shooting instead of it just being super blurry. Here are some more full body photos and some movement photos. I love the 35mm because it is a super fast lens and gets really tack sharp images. So. I can take photos of models like running around or like swishing their hair and it will come out really sharp. It'll focus instantly. And here are some photo examples from weddings. Uh, this is the only downfall that I find with the 35 is that it's not as great in low light as the 50mm 1.2. So when I'm traveling and I know we're going to be out at night or when we get to a wedding reception, because I like to shoot with natural light, I tend to stick to my 50 because the photos just look a little bit better. So I find that's the only downfall with the 35 is the low light situation. So that actually brings me to my second favorite lens, which is the Canon 50mm 1.2. And here it is. I'll give you a little close up so you can see what it looks like. I haven't had this one for as long. I think I bought it maybe four years ago now. Here is the front. Is that a scratch? <laughs> I think it's just a smudge. Don't panic. I'm panicking. The UV filter, it's me. Oh, it's a scratch. Yeah, at least it's on the UV filter, not the actual lens. Or maybe it's a hair. I can't tell. But anyway, that's the 50. It's a great lens. As you can see, the original band is still on it because I haven't used it as much or in as many harsh conditions as the 35. So as I was saying, even though my 35mm is on my lens, on my lens, on my camera, like 90% of the time, when that focal length doesn't work for me, if, I'm, if I want to get a different style of photo, if my client is after something different, I'll change lenses. And the 50mm is usually my second favorite lens to go to. So I like using the 50mm as a contrast to the 35 because the 50 doesn't have that distortion when you take portraits. It's great for shooting lookbooks or campaigns for fashion brands. Um, I've also used it at weddings because it's got a nice like cropped in shot. The 50mm also has great foreground separation. So unlike the 35 where the subject kind of not blends in with the background, but it's not as separated from the background, the 50mm, the subject is tack sharp and the background is really beautiful and bokeh like. Here are a few example photos taken on the Canon 50mm 1.2. These are some close up portraits at first so you can see how there isn't any distortion in the close ups like there is in the 35. You can see how the background blurs and has that beautiful bokeh look, but Unlike the 85 where I mentioned before that the background is so blurred that you can't even tell where it is, the 50mm is kind of like in between the 35 and the 85 if you want something in the middle. So it's blurry but it's not too blurry. I don't know, I like it for that reason. In these full body photos, again you can see the lack of distortion in the 50mm lens. So again it's great for shooting lookbook photos where you want to keep the photos looking true to life. With movement, unlike the 35, I find that the 50mm is a little bit slower in catching focus, especially with movement photos. If I have a model like running around or spinning or doing like big crazy movements, I find that I have to take a lot of photos one after another to make sure one is really, really sharp. Unlike the 35 where I can take a lot less and I know they will be sharp. I also find that I have trouble focusing with the 50mm during backlight golden hour portraits when the sun is coming into the lens. I find that the lens really breathes focus a lot before finally deciding where the focal point is and me being able to take a photo. And here are some photos taken in some more low light situations. These are from wedding receptions where I mostly just shot with natural light. And I love the 50mm in low light because the lens lets a lot more light into the photo and the photos look a lot smoother compared to the 35. I don't have to bring my ISO as high so the photos aren't as noisy either. So I hope you guys like those um, example photos that I took with the 35 and the 50. Now I'm going to jump in and show you some comparison photos so you can see the 35 and the 50 side by side. 
So these photos weren't taken on the same shoot, but I've gone through my archives of photographs and picked photos where I was standing at the same distance away from my subject so you can get a clear comparison between the two. Once again, going back to what I've been saying from the beginning, here you can really see the difference in distortion between the 35mm and the 50mm. You can also see in the close-up photos the difference between the bokeh that you see in the background. As I mentioned, you can see a lot more background in the 35mm photos compared to the 50mm photos which are a lot more blurry. In these full body photos as well, you can see once again the distortion in the 35 It's more of a creative shot whereas the 50mm photos don't have distortion and is a lot more true to the eye. And then right here at the end, we have the low light photos again, which I shot at weddings with natural light at the reception or also like a backlight in, in the background. And you can see again, the difference between how much light is lent into the 35 compared to the 50. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of my two favorite lenses from my kit. These are the two lenses that I love the most for portrait photography and travel photography. And if you're interested, I would love to make a video of the lenses that I don't use anymore because my kit has honestly drastically changed from when I first started. And if you want to see a complete review of what's in my camera bag, I also have a video about that and I'll put it in the description below for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys all really soon. Bye! <laughs> Is she still there by the way?